So this is a quick tutorial on the types of patterns that you might need to uh, create in your parts. You can see here uh, I've just created this plate uh, as a base to uh, illustrate the patterns on and then I've also created uh, just a hole wizard hole uh, that's been referenced to the uh, base planes here. You can see that this is a counterboard hole uh, for a, an M3 socket head screw and I've just dimensioned it relative to the uh, base plane here and then locked it onto the front plane here. So we're going to work our way through some of the more common patterns uh, that you may need to use. The first one being the linear pattern uh, and as you can see from the icon there uh, the linear pattern takes your original copy that would be the uh, uh, blue uh, copy in the icon here and it can uh, make copies of it in two directions. Uh, you don't have to make copies in two directions, you can use the linear pattern in a single direction if you want to, uh, but we'll have a look at uh, both of those options. So the first thing that it's asking for when you uh, launch the pa uh, new pattern feature is a direction for direction one of the pattern. So in this case we can use the edges of the plate if we wanted to get a directional reference if we clicked on this edge here you can see I get a little preview arrow pointing along the edge uh, so that's indicating the direction that this uh, pattern would travel uh, equally good uh, are flat uh, faces or planes within the model so if I picked the right plane there uh, the pattern still wants to travel in the same direction as when I pick the edge but obviously uh, when you pick a plane uh, the direction is normal to the plane or at 90 degrees to the plane uh, as opposed to when you pick an edge uh, it's parallel to the edge so that's just worth noting we're going to uh, use the right plane that's fine for our purposes uh, and then you can see that the system uh, it's happy that we've uh, put a reference in the first box it then jumps to the second direction box in this case uh, we're going to pick a uh, reference that uh, is at 90 degrees to the first reference you don't have to do this uh, it could go off at uh, an angle which isn't 90 uh, but in terms of the geometry that we have to pick from here uh, everything is either in line or at 90 degrees so we're going to pick uh, this edge here. So you can see again, it's giving me a little arrow there. This is a visual representation of the direction uh, that that edge has uh, caused. And if I needed to flip that direction at any point, I could uh, click on the uh, reverse direction arrow here. And you can see it flicks to the opposite direction. You can do that with either either reference. And then the next box that becomes highlighted when you've given it two direction references is the feature and face reference box. So what this is asking for is uh, what features do you want to pattern using this pattern feature. So in our case we want to pattern this counterboard hole. So if I hover over it here and just click on, click on it you can see that I get a preview of what the pattern is going to do. And if we look at how many members of this pattern there are you can see that it corresponds uh, with the number of pattern members that I've entered up here. So if I increase that, you can see more pattern members are being added. Uh, I'm going to actually tap a number in there. So let's put five pattern members down. And what you can also see from the preview is if we count them, one, two, three, four, and then obviously it's counting the original uh, feature as a pattern member. So that's worth noting. If you type 5 in here, you aren't going to get 5 additional features. You're only going to get 4 additional features because the original uh, is counted in this figure as well. So that's worth noting. So currently we've got a pattern which has 20mm uh, spacing between uh, the center point of each hole. So this is 20mm between each one. And we've got 5 pattern members. But you can see that even though we selected this edge as a reference for the second direction, we're not actually getting any preview uh, of anything that's been patterned in that direction. And that's because this has been set to 1. The number of pattern members in the second direction is 1. So it classes this first run uh, as 1. 
So if we want to increase that to two, you can see that we now have a, uh, a second run uh, of five above it here. So we're just going to reduce that down so that they're all on the plate surface. So if I just roll that up to three, you can see what's happening there. So it's patterning five times in this direction, including the first one, and it's patterning three times in this direction, including the first line. So that's essentially the linear pattern. If we OK that, we can see the results of that. There you go. We've got a regular grid of these uh, holes in this pattern that we've defined. Uh, and one thing to note is if we go in and change uh, the type of hole or the position of the original hole, uh, all the pattern members will update relative to that hole. So this was an M3. If we shrink it down to an M1.6 and then click on OK, you can see that all the pattern members are linked back to this original pattern, uh, this original hole that the pattern was made from. So it saves time. If you were to put these in individually and you wanted to change the spec, you'd have to go through each one individually and change the spec of them. Uh, if we just drop back into the pattern again, so I'm right clicking on the feature over here and going edit feature. So we're back into the pattern dialog here. There's a few uh, options in here that may be useful for you. If you uh, wanted uh, this configuration, so this space in, in this direction and this direction and this number of pattern members, except you didn't want uh, some of the pattern members to be active, then you can uh, open up this instances to skip option and that gives you an entry box here and it also highlights each uh, pattern member with a pink dot here and if I click on any of these so I've clicked on the center one there maybe click on the two either side of it as well and then OK that you can see that it erases those members of the pattern so the pattern is still technically uh, a pattern with five members in this direction with a spacing of 20 but there's some pattern members that are missing so that might be useful in certain situations if you need the regular spacing but you don't need all the pattern members uh, to be active then you can uh, turn certain ones off by going into the instances to skip option there so we're going to turn them all back on by clearing this box clear that box uh, and then I think we'll move on to the uh, next type of pattern that we're going to look at. So we're just going to delete this pattern feature. I right clicked on there, selected delete, yes. And then if you open up the uh, pattern drop down here, we're going to have a look at the circular pattern. So the two things that the circular pattern is going to need is it's going to need some reference uh, which represents the center of the uh, circle that it's going to pattern. Uh, your feature around. So there's certain bits of geometry that you can select for this. Uh, probably the safest one to use is an axis. So you can see in this part it has some axes already in the part. I've added these in uh, before I began. So you can see if I pick that first axis there that's uh, running horizontally relative to our view, sorry vertically relative to our view. Uh, it accepts that uh, as a uh, pattern axis and then if I was to come down to this features box and just select the feature that I want to pattern you can see it's given me a preview of a pattern which uh, takes this original uh, feature that I've selected this original hole uh, it makes copies of it 17 including the original 17 copies uh, it swings them through 360 degrees, so back to where the original was, uh, and it spaces them equally. That's what this option's doing here. So I could accept that. Uh, some of the pattern members in this case have fallen outside the plate. Uh, I'll just correct that by moving the original uh, hole nearer to the center of the plate. So you can see there. And then if we go back into the uh, pattern feature, 
you can see them all previewed there uh, you can see that they go through that 360 degrees with equal spacing but let's say I didn't want to, to let the system uh, define the angle between e each one of these which is what it's doing currently it's taking that 360 and dividing it down into 17 pieces so I, I wanted to have control over the angle between each one so you can do that you just select instance spacing here and say I wanted an angle of 15 degrees between each one it just makes uh, 17 pattern members and it equally spaces them 15 degrees apart so you can see that they don't quite reach all the way around to 360 but that's just another way of controlling the circular pattern you can let the system space them or you can define the spacing here but either way you, do, you always define the number of pattern members and again if we wanted to skip on any of these pattern members we can open up this instances to skip box and then just select the members that we don't want to appear and there you go so really the uh, linear pattern and the circular pattern are the two main ones that you're going to need to use in your parts uh, but we will do a further tutorial looking at some of the uh, uh, more exotic pattern uh, types that you can create within the system